All right, heading up to Champs in Columbia. I'm gonna film a show. And uh, I'm bringing in another gentleman that I see every day out at Redskins Park, uh, Mr. Patrick Donahue. What's going on? Not too much, man. Uh, long day. Super Morning long at the day. park and <laughs> night at Champs. You can't beat it, right? <laughs> you can't, you know. And uh, this guy's from uh, PressBoxDC.com uh, doing some great things. And, you know, just I think a lot of people think of what we do, you know, as uh, you know, broadcasters and writers that – We've got this easy life, you know, but I'm going to let somebody else explain exactly what we do every day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's hard to explain to people. Uh, and, and honestly, whether it's easy or hard, I still wouldn't trade it for a lot of other things out there. So I, I'm not trying to sound like I'm complaining about it too much. But, uh, you know, long days, not a lot of sleep. Uh, media kind of gets the shaft sometimes it gets told you know where to be when to be and you know if you can't make it uh you're, you're kind of lost so uh and you know getting getting information out of these players dealing with the media relations people it's all just it's different work. challenges so <laughs> it's work man it's just like any other job you know it's uh it's tiring but uh but you know i love it that's why i'm doing it you know what's funny is that i get i get the questions all the time about you know, people say, Lake, uh, how, how does so-and-so look in practice today? And, <laughs> and, and you, you know, as, as a player, you know that, listen, as media, we get a chance to see the first 15 minutes. This is across the NFL as a whole. <laughs> we get a chance to see the first 15 minutes of practice every day, yep. and that's when they're warming up. Yeah, if you want to know how limber <laughs> someone is or how flexible they are right. and whatnot and stretches, <laughs> we can write about that and tell you about that all day. Exactly. But. Basically, it's the report that we put out as far as who's practicing, who's injured, who's not there. Mm -hmm. And then they usher us off very quickly when it's time for you guys to really practice. And we, wait around, and we wait around in the media room all day. You know, we're doing our work. And then we get a, a coach's press conference for about 15, 20 minutes. If and that. you know you're not getting anything in the press conference. So. Yep. It, it, it's a lot of uh, you have to be very uh, you have to have a great imagination <laughs> to do this yep. because that's basically where a lot of your stories come from. Yep. Obviously, a day like today where you have just breaking news breaking across everywhere with uh, you know Ray Rice with uh, with the sanctions of Penn State. I mean, it was just stuff popping up everywhere. And for the first time in a long time, it was actually a pretty normal day at Redskins Park where I thought it was going to be hectic today because of the way they looked yesterday. So uh, we'll talk about that. I had a gentleman ask us a question as far as, uh, you know, the, the Hogs and, you, you know, the, the original members and all that. So I'm not sure what his name is, but I uh, uh, want to give him a, a shout out for that. That was a good question. If you have any questions, please come on up. Let us know uh, your thoughts sitting here with uh, Chris Wilson, linebacker extraordinaire, as, like, as he used to say, and uh, right here over here, Patrick Donahue. So, and uh, you know what, real quick, because we're going to bring in Heather soon, too. You know, she, she knows her stuff, and I'm sure she's got some choice words <laughs> to talk about. But I, I wanted to give a congratulations. Uh, my agent is sitting right here in front of us, Jesse White. You, you know, my, know my guy here. And uh, he, uh, he covers a lot of things. Uh, he help, helps me out quite a bit in my career. But, but he did something that he wanted to do for a while, and, and, and he didn't cover football. I mean, he had, you know, uh, myself in media, some other folks, some other, you know, boxers, other athletes, track and field. But he always wanted to be an NFL agent, and uh, he is certified NFL agent now, passed his, uh, his, his test. So I want to give him a <laughs> – that's big. So yeah, congrats, man. That's, yeah. that's big time right there. So now the fee should, the fee should lower a little bit. <laughs> 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 Look, uh, yesterday, you know, we'll start with Patrick here. Uh, I, you know, all off season, all, you know, training camp, we kept hearing about Robert Griffin, uh, you know, Shakur Cousins be the quarterback, and – we all said, listen, you know, they, they haven't played any games that are real yet. Uh, new, new coach, new, you know, system, so to speak. I know Sean was there last year, Sean McVay, but it still is a new setup. You know, everything's different now. And, and I thought yesterday, under the circumstances, 
he was under duress the whole game. I actually thought he played pretty well. Yeah, uh, you can't put too much of the blame from that game on Robert Griffin. Um, he obviously has struggled throughout the preseason and, and pretty much since his uh, knee injury. But, you know, like you said, it's a new system. Even though it's the same offensive coordinator, it, a lot of those plays, I think a lot of people would agree that that did not look like a, a Mike Shanahan called game right no, there. No, so no. Um, he's <laughs> definitely, the least. yeah. So he's definitely still learning, um, you know, the system and the plays. And, and you can't. It doesn't matter if you put Kirk Cousins back there or Robert Griffin third. You can't be a pocket passer with no pocket to throw in. So yeah, great point. Um, and, and he didn't. That I'm mostly critical of RG three when he tries and do too much. You know, when he tries and put the entire play, the entire team on his shoulder, runs out of the pocket. He's not a very good thrower on the run. As people don't bring that up enough, but he's not a very good thrower on the run as of right now. He needs to work on that. And, um, you know, if he can keep posting 96-plus QB ratings like he did uh, yesterday, he's going to put them in a lot of positions to, to be in games and win games. Uh, he, you know, he obviously needs help, and the team needs to hold on to the ball better. Well, I, I think that there's a situation, too, where the offensive line is just – it's not good. Mm -mm. And outside of Trent Williams, who's a perennial pro bowler, Corey Lichtensteiger moves from guard to center, and that's a new position for him. So, you know, I don't want to, uh, you know, call him out yet because obviously he needs yeah. some more time. But, but, listen, this guy's coming off knee surgery. He's your franchise quarterback. Last time I looked, when you look at the Patriots, when you, when you look at Denver with Peyton Manning, uh, you know, those offensive lines are, are, are like secret service. I mean, you're not getting to the quarterback. The Redskins, to me, have not invested a lot of money into their offensive line the way they should. If you're going to have a pocket quarterback that you want to have in the pocket, you have to allow him to stay in the pocket. He's running on his, for his life. So when you talk about, you know, not accurate throws running out, that's because he's running for his life. And they haven't invested enough, in my opinion, and I think it reared its head. Before we, you know – jump off the cliff here let's keep in mind the guy that they were going up against is the best defensive player in the game and jj watt so you know you can't lose sight of that because he had a jj watt game that wasn't a fluke what you saw he does that day in and day out week in and week out but nevertheless you know tyler columbus at right tackle he's not the answer yep. and i'm sure wednesday when we're back out there you know it's, it's easy to say that when you're right now you know 50 miles away mm -hmm. but when we see tyler i mean it's just I'm not saying something that a lot of us in that media room don't talk about. Yep. Well, I personally would have liked to see a little bit more Alfred Morris. And good he, point. He, he yeah. had a good game. I'm not, I'm not calling him out as a player to say he didn't play well. But i like to see more of him, especially he when he plays so well. He only yep. had, I think he only had like 14, 15 carries. I think it was 14, yeah. And he, about, he had about 100 yards. Yeah, he had um, 91 to be exact. Mm -hmm. if, if you can run the ball early, then you get a, a defense on, on their heels where – they got to stop the run and the pass, and they have to be balanced. And as a defender, we hate playing honest. We like to cheat. We like to have a tip. We like to say, oh, I know it's a pass now, or I know they're going to go deep, or we, we like to have it in our favor somewhat. So um, I think that will take some of the pressure off our RG3, and that will take pressure off the offensive line because you got defensive linemen that are on the line of scrimmage trying to really be stout against that run. So you were, you were a good pass rusher, you know. Yeah. W would you be tired? You know, do you think it was something you would be more tired in the fourth quarter if teams were running at you? So if you did have to pass the rusher, I mean, uh, rush the passer, then maybe you would be a little bit more winded? Uh, rushing the passer was a lot more exhausting than stopping the run. Okay. But okay. It's, it's, a different, it's a different technique. So if, if I'm playing the run, I don't think fatigue plays a, a, a part in it, but – the technique side of it. Now I got. I'm, I'm going. I'm getting going a little bit late. Okay. When I'm concerned about the run, if, if we're getting gashed. So you think that would have been a way to neutralize JJ Watt by running the ball at him the way they were in the first uh, first half? I'm not saying you got to run the ball at him. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you got to run the ball away from him, but uh, you got to run the ball. You got to you got to get the ball run, especially when you're having so much success at doing it. You sure, know. Sure. So just uh, and then they're gonna have some more plays that they're gonna learn that they're better at and, and some plays that, you know, they might put on the back burner. So. Now, is, is running the ball more, uh, whether it's towards J.J. or not, would that have necessarily gotten him off his pass rush a little bit? Or is someone like J.J. Watt, is he told by a defensive coordinator, you're going after the quarterback every play? J.J. Watt, is, uh, he has X factors. <laughs> <laughs> yep. he, so um, I'm sure with what he can do, he has a, he has a style of playing where – 
he said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this and that will neutralize two out of three things. What, 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 two out of th- what, what that third thing is is what offensive coordinators have to figure out. And then all J.J. Watt does is just switch his technique and then switch it back and switch. So it's a little, Very a, a, a little bit of cat and mouse. What, what I really wanted to see is what we're seeing here tonight with these Detroit Lions. I, I was excited to see Deshaun Jackson go deep. Mm. You can't go deep if you don't have enough time to throw the ball deep. I mean, he just, Robert, every three-step drop he had, every five-step drop he had, they tried to roll him out. There was always someone on top of and, him, and that's kind he of was hit fourteen times. That yeah, was that was lot. maybe the, that was maybe the defend the defensive mentality of that player. They say, "Guess what, guys? If we get after this quarterback, we neutralize two players: RG three and Deshaun Jackson." You know, so it, it, it's I, just I think a little bit more Alfred would have. That's a that's done a great well. point, man. You know, it, it's almost as if you go back, to, you know, flip back over to the Ravens. Now, you watch that team play. And in their heyday, and I understand they won a Super Bowl passing the ball, but they still had a stout defense. And, and I think that now sometimes teams are so enamored with passing the football that they, you know, it looks great. It brings some fans in. But we saw what happened in the Super Bowl. Yep. You can pass all you want, but if you can't run the ball, yeah. you're going to lose games that matter. And, and I think that's, that's – Well, they can run the ball. That's so, the thing. Well, well, if you don't make it a point to say, you know what, maybe our run game, because that offensive line is a decent run-blocking offensive mm-hmm. line. But as far as a, a pass-blocking line, it's just not good. And so where, where's the balance? And we heard it today in the press conference. Uh, Jay Gruden said, now that, you know, looking back afterwards, I probably should have run the ball more. Yeah. Well, we've heard that a lot. We heard that with Kyle Shanahan a lot. <laughs> I probably should have run the ball I more. I mean, you got an extraordinary player in RG3, and I call it the RG3 button. So as a coach, they probably want to not press the RG3 button so much, but kind of just call good sound plays and then just let him use his natural instincts and, and make those plays better, you know. So, um, And, yeah, going, going back to what you said with uh, what won this past year's Super Bowl, I, I've been saying this for a little while now. I, I often will refer to other people, um, I'll refer to the Redskins as the, a poor man's uh, Seahawks. Mm-hmm. I really could see them. I mean, they're not that way yet, but I think that they are – are built that way Mm -hmm. um, in the fact that I see Alfred Morris as almost like a poor man's Marshawn Lynch, just a downhill runner who's going to run hard. You should be feeding him the ball. Mm -hmm. Um, Russell Wilson and RG3, they have differences, but at the same time you're looking at a similar skill set, mobile quarterbacks who who can also throw the ball. And then um, the defense is is clearly the strong suit, which is weird to say about the Redskins (laughs) right now, but they are the most promising looking part of the team. And they have a lot of, even though they have a nice mix of vets in there, they have young talent too. Um, it just looks like the defense is going to be more formidable this year. So I think that if they could adopt uh, a Seattle Seahawks playing style and hang their hat on defense, uh, have a tough mentality, and just feed Alfred Morris the rock and only let Griffin throw 20, 25 times a game. But, it's you know, a lot of parallels to, to Jackson, there. yeah, you it could – Because uh, the play-action run is a touchdown with, it, with the Jackson. Jackson. Yeah. And, they, and, when, they, <laughs> and when they went to it yesterday, it mm-hmm. was effective again. Yes. It's something that was part of – I mean, listen, for everything that, you know, Shanahan's didn't do, they did show you some things that they could do mm-hmm. and, and what Robert could do. And, you know, that's a good analogy about the Seahawks because, you know, clearly we go back to and you, you, you played in the game, mm-hmm. you know, against them in, in the playoffs. It, it was – a game that when you yeah. guys were playing physical, we running was beating the them football, down. You, you were <laughs> that still pains you, doesn't it? All three phases of the game, we was beating <laughs> them down, and then um, you know our quarterback got kind of hurt, and you know we kind of got stuck on the RG three button a little bit, and uh, the tide had turned in that game before he did. got hurt, though. No, no, it didn't. Yes, it did. No, you it were didn't. losing by seven he when, he when he got hurt. He got hurt when he oh, threw that touchdown. Oh, the first time. You're right. You're yeah. right. You're right. The one to the sideline. Yeah, it was when he got re-hurt. When he yeah, really, got really, really, hurt. Yeah, really hurt. <laughs> That's when the tide had turned after that. Yeah. All right. So. Well, look, folks, uh, sitting here with uh, Chris Wilson, Patrick Donahue, myself, Lake Lewis, uh, we asked a question as far as, uh, you know, Mount Rushmore's of Baltimore, and I, I mentioned Heather had nailed it last time, you know, we were here. Uh, before we bring her on, I, I want to get your thoughts. Uh, you know, you, you University of Maryland grad, mm-hmm. yep. and uh, welcome to the big leagues now, by the way. Yeah, Thank you. Know, Thank big you. Ten football. You, yeah. You'll find out real soon. But um, I, I wanted to get your thoughts on, on Penn State, the sanctions being dropped, because when I was in the, in the media room today, you were retweeting some harsh stuff from one of your friends as far as Penn State, and just it was like, man, is this – is this directed at me or what? What was that about? 
Uh, I'm not sure what what tweet you're exactly talking about. Uh, talking about someone mentioned as far as the sanctions, and it was supposed to be the most, you know, the the hardest thing that sanctions ever put out, and now they're backpedaling, blah blah blah. Yeah, and and I think now I know what you're talking about. The, uh, <laughs> I, you I, I mean, I've, I've been having conversations with because uh, being I'm originally from Pennsylvania, so I know exactly. I know so many people that went to that school and uh, are just diehard supporters of of the team and. Um, so I've been getting text messages all day and, and I mean, they're happy. And my thing was, um, you know, as far as the, the sanctions being lifted, I am happy. What I said to one of my, the, probably the biggest Penn state fan I know is I am happy to see, um, players not being punished anymore for something that they didn't necessarily have anything to do with. Um, I wish that there would have been some talk of like, kind of a probation like this is or in, the, in the onset, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Because they usually do. They usually specify that, you yeah. know, the sanctions can be lifted with good behavior. That was the talks, and they actually. Didn't. The, 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 the talks actually leading up into this was that James Franklin supposedly uh, had been approached, and I'm like, wow, they went, the NCAA went to him and not the school. Yeah. Find that hard to believe. But suppose, Who heard these talks? Well, yeah, it, like it, 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 it had been put this out. Like and I can, and I can quote the way it happened. <laughs> well, no, like, I, can, I can quote an outlet. Uh, you, you know, the, it was reported on all, a, a lot of the major Pennsylvania newspaper sites okay. that over the weekend that the word was is that the school had been contacted about it. And obviously they, they didn't make it up because it's true. Mm-hmm. But it, the word was is that there were two – opportunities that they could choose from one was it would have been it would have been a reduction of um the uh, scholarship still would have a reduction but you you would be eligible for post postseason play right away Mm -hmm. you still would have those you know deductions in your scholarships though or the other one was you get all of your scholarships back effectively effective immediately but you can't go to a postseason game this year the sanctions get dropped for next year it was neither one it was all of the above yeah so now I'm so going to play cons- scholarships. everything's back and mm-hmm. I'm going to play conspiracy theorists even though I like what happened obviously as alum this is great I mean I broadcast on Saturdays there this is great but it just so happens to be that the Big 10 as a conference had perhaps the worst day in a long time mm-hmm. with some of their bell cows, meaning Michigan, Michigan State, and Ohio State losing and losing big. And even Penn State and Maryland and, and struggled, struggled hard. They struggled. Didn't lose well, wait, wait, time out, time out. He just said something that we can't do just yet. You cannot mention Maryland in that category <laughs> just yet. That's a little <laughs> free. Yeah, he man. said, and even Penn State and Maryland, I'm like, Mar- oh, wow. Hey, I mean, we're okay. in it. We got a chance. We're 2 0. Oh. We're in it now. I, we haven't started our Big Ten play yet, but yeah. we'll see. We'll see what happens. Where's your first home game, Maryland's first home game? I believe – wait, first Big Ten home game? I believe it's Ohio State. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the big leagues. I know. Well, I mean, they haven't looked so good so far, so maybe we can uh, surprise them in College Park. I like that we don't have to go to the horseshoe and play. So uh, Just remember, what is it, October the 31st? No, no, it's November 3rd, if I'm not mistaken. Is that when we play? The Come on up to Happy Valley. Yeah. Happy Valley. And I, I, I let him know this in the press box. I was uh, the actual play-by-play guy for the last time Maryland played at Penn State or against Penn State, and the score was Maryland 7, mm. Penn State 7 plus 0. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 70 to 7. Zero. So, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I know we're in Maryland. I'm from here, so I try to show some love, but it's going to be hard now. Yeah, no, I, mean, I wish that was another game. He's a Michigan State guy, so, so he's, he's just he's – just Well, you know, I'm with the Northwood, <laughs> so I just watch all this uh, BCS stuff and take it all. But, yeah, I root for the Spartan Dogs, you know. They recruit Flint, Michigan. Does, does Michigan State and Maryland play this year? I don't I don't, I don't think believe so. so. I don't um, I don't think so. Wow. No. Okay. I, I would it's like to tough. say definitively, but I really don't think we do. Yeah, it, it's tough, though. I mean, seriously, you know, not to not – Oh, to actually, knock. yes, we – we do. Is it in Michigan State or? No, Maryland? I believe that's one of our home games. I want to see Maryland basketball versus Big Ten. I basketball. think Maryland basketball is going to fare actually pretty well because that's. I, I was thinking so too, but man, they're they're a team lost that can't a lot get of players. Way. We lost a lot of transfers, and um, we had a four-star recruit, seven foot two co- guy coming in who got kicked out of school. Is now going to go play for Bruce Pearl in Auburn. He got mm. arrested and kicked out of school like over the summer. Shame and on you! T- shame on you! Has, that opportunity missed, and uh, but I mean, you lose a you lose a seven foot two center. That's that's gonna hurt. So I have, a, I have a solution that will make Maryland big time football like overnight, instantly, where they could challenge perhaps the Ohio states, the Michigan states, the Penn states, the Michigans. 
as far as recruiting, not as far as the results on the field, because that's going to take some time. Got to get a new head coach. <laughs> well, I, I can't say hey, you can say that as an alum. I don't want to get a letter yeah. from Randy Ezel, but <laughs> I, I will say this: Maryland, if they really want to recruit against these teams that come here and just poach all their players, Penn State's doing it right now with Franklin. Mm-hmm. Perhaps you, you, you call a, a, an alum. Well, he's not an alum. Well, he is an alum. He didn't graduate, but he's, but he's, he's known as Maryland. Your former owner with the Redskins, Dan Snyder. And perhaps you say, hey, we want to play our games less than, what, three miles from, from yeah. FedEx Field? Mm-hmm. You play your home games at FedEx Field. The new Miracle Blade World Class 2012 Professional Series is the best set of knives you'll ever own. The spectacular World Class 2012 Series, over a $300 value for just $39.95. But we're just getting started. We'll send you a complete second set of Miracle Blades for free. That's right, another entire set, a $300 value for free. Just pay shipping and processing. And we're still not done. If you're one of the first 500 callers, we'll send you two additional Miracle Blade World Class Slicers. That's an additional $80 value, totally free. Miracle Blade World Class is also guaranteed for life. We'll replace any damaged knife at any time for any reason for free forever. Over $600 worth of knives for just one payment of $39.95. Don't miss this opportunity. Call right now or just log on to MiracleBlade.com. When you have credit card debt, the debt suckers, high rate and high pay are everywhere. Ooh, they're making another minimum payment. Great. Most of the money goes to us. We'll suck the life out of them. Because your credit card rates are so high, you can't get rid of the debt suckers alone. Their minimum payments are in vain. No, that's juicy. But one call to Consolidated Credit can get the debt suckers off your neck. Thank you for calling Consolidated Credit. Oh no, they're low lower his rates and consolidate his bills into one low payment. He'd pay off his debt in no time. Consolidated Credit drives us batty. Call Consolidated Credit now. Call now and get your life back. Oh, because debt sucks. Call now. Call Consolidated Credit at 1-800-599-8702. 1-800-599-8702. That's 1-800-599-8702. Call now. Do you want whiter teeth in five minutes? Then you want Power Swabs, the clinically proven way to instantly have bright white teeth in just five minutes. Coffee, tea, or smoking stains are no match for Power Swabs. The secret is a tooth detergent developed by Dr. Martin Ginniger that lifts yellow stains off of your teeth in just five minutes, revealing a bright white smile. Power Swabs are clinically proven to whiten your teeth on average two shades whiter in just five minutes. After seven days, your teeth will be on average six shades whiter, guaranteed. Order today and you can try Power Swabs risk-free. Power Swabs even work on caps, crowns, veneers, and bonding, so all your teeth will be movie star white. With just one treatment, I saw what I want my smile to look like. I I saw the brightness that should be there when I smile. (laughs) I love to laugh. I'm a very happy person. And with Power Swabs, I get the white smile that I want. Call or go online right now to try Power Swabs absolutely risk-free. So you must order now. Get your teeth whiter in just five minutes with Power Swab. Call to try Power Swabs risk-free now. All right, folks, uh, we're back here. Uh, Champs Americana here in uh, Columbia. And myself, uh, Chris Wilson. Linebacker extraordinaire. You, yeah. uh, you told me to say that years ago. I s- it stuck with me, so uh, I don't even know I'm saying it. But linebacker yeah. extraordinaire. I had I've had 20 aliases since then. <laughs> <laughs> and, and folks, uh, to his left, uh, we're bringing in uh, Heather Saffield. She's the uh, general manager here and uh, responsible Good evening, responsible for myself sitting here again. And uh, it's always great to be here. You know, the last couple times you were here, there was some drama. <laughs> I don't know. I, I hope I'm breaking not the person news. bringing it. But, yeah, it's always breaking news on my part. Uh, mm-hmm. Again, you know, today, obviously, a- as soon as I saw it, a- again, I was a- a- in D.C. and Ashburn in practice, Redskins practice, and I-, and I just saw it, and I'm thinking to myself, either we're going to have one heck of a show tonight 
<laughs> or we're going to have <laughs> no show tonight, at, at least with Tyrod Taylor. And, you know, I, I do understand why the Ravens and, and Coach Harbaugh did what he did, uh, you know, as far as just, just asking the guys to stay out of the limelight a little bit here because of everything that happened. I do want to get your thoughts on this. I mentioned earlier that, you know, you, if you don't mind, you know, me saying, you know, you're married to, a, you know, a police officer and, uh, you know, you're a diehard Ravens fan on top of that. I'm a Baltimore girl. You know, how, how does Born this. Born and raised, you know. How, how does this make you feel about the Ravens as an organization, considering they took a lot of heat for defending him for so long? Mm -hmm. And then today it just seems like did, did they cave in a little bit to this? I, I think that I forget who it was on SportsCenter or something had mentioned that um, they released him because not because they saw the full video today but because the public saw the full video today. And, and from my perspective, that's exactly what happened. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, domestic violence is a very serious issue, and the fact that you mentioned that there's no penalties, no rules, you know, you have Ursa, you have all these issues with morality, drinking and driving, uh, murder trials, theft, drugs, you know, potential players killing their girlfriends that are pregnant. There's all of these things that have been going on and now, you know, this comes to light. A lot of it, I think, has to do with um, how we, as a society, get our information. Social media, yeah. Facebook, Twitter, everything is instantaneous, you know, and people are, are passionate about their teams and how they feel. And they feel like they know people, but what they don't understand is, you know, um, this is a football player. He also has a family. You know, this is a very heated topic. I think he did the right thing by not having his players speak out today. Um, there's probably a very divided feeling amongst everybody on how this was played out. And, you know, Tyrod, and, uh, who's going to be here, is very close with Ray. Matter of fact, AJ, who you talked to, he represents Ray as well. And and you could just tell, you know, just from talking with him, that it was it's an emotional time for a lot of guys. You know, one, one thing people will, will say, you know, is that he, what he did was wrong. The other side of this is, is that, yeah, in the media, you, you know, you're out there and you cover guys, but we're not with him the majority of the time. Oh. His teammates are. You know, you're a player. You, you, you're you with your teammates more than you are your family, you know, at times. Right. Those are the people that know his character best. And it's just, uh, and I know it hurts a lot of guys because I do say, uh, just a week ago, just two weeks ago, everyone was defending his character. And it was a mistake that was made. A punishment was handed down, and the, the, the act of serving the punishment was in place. I, I do have a problem again, and I, I, I'll stick with it. I, I'm not defending the act. That was, that was heinous. That was cowardice in, in, at best. But, you know, I, I just thought that there were rules in place. You know, when you do something wrong and you get punished for it, you got to serve the punishment. I have a problem with it. I say, why take the heat for defending them and then turn around and take the heat for not defending them? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, again, well, I, I, people feel passionate about, you know, domestic violence is, it has come to the forefront. There are millions of women every day sure. that endure things, you know, similar, if not worse. Right. Mm -hmm. And people have a very, you know, passionate feeling about protecting our mothers and our daughters and our sisters. And um, that is a whole separate issue from, you know, Something my husband said to me, you know, 25 years of this is that you never know what goes on in somebody's bedroom. No, you don't. Or inside <laughs> somebody's relationship or their marriage. We got to a little snippet of this video, and as I, it, I, I can't even stand to see this on TV because I think that just reincites people. Um, it's a very emotional thing to watch, and I think, you know, somebody all along, this video, we had this little snippet months ago, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and he never said he didn't do it you know all all the other stuff that we all know happened but now you're going to wait till the very first game and drop that bomb tmz which is not exactly <laughs> you know uh cnn right. of the world <laughs> tmz is known for buying their information but that's a whole nother issue but i find it hard to believe that nobody had any of this information prior to today mm. let, let, let me let me pose a question to you two and this is this again, you know, this is me and the media. This is what we do. We maybe we overthink things, but I, I like to think I put a lot of thought into some of my questions here. And, and one of my things was, 
just a few months ago during the NFL draft, a lot of people in the country said that they were disgusted to see Michael Sam on the screen kissing his boyfriend. You mm-hmm. know, let's just put it out there. Well, people said that that didn't need to be seen. That's their private stuff. That doesn't have to be shown. I understand this is a different s- circumstances, but isn't that falling under the same umbrella of privacy at the end of the day? That's what me and Heather was just talking about. Um, the, the way things come about, I know this is a public facility, but I, if I'm a stranger and I come up to you with my phone and I, you know, that's like invasion of privacy. I think it needs to be some, some new laws with that. But um, let me see that with like Jay Z and his uh, and uh, Beyonce's sister. They had a video of right. women in an elevator and she's kicking on them and, and doing all kinds of and stuff. Jay Z did a great and, and, job. Well, I mean, just well, he did. Still. He just he stood still. He didn't do anything. But but my point is, but maybe that was being recorded. It was being recorded. <laughs> And maybe Jay-Z stood still because he had a time in his life where he made a mistake. He might not have been hitting a girl, but somewhere you, you, you realize that I'm vulnerable. And as athletes, we often put on pedestals and held accountable to being perfect. You know, especially when you get accolades like the man of the year. But, I mean, I guess I said it once, I said it again. I, I always like to see people become better. Sure. Because that's what people need to see. That's reality. The, the, the fact of the matter is... You know, O.J. Simpson is human. You know, he's. I know he ran through the airport and jumped over the, <laughs> the suitcases and all that stuff and broke all those records, but I want to see people become better. And just like um, Riley Cooper, Michael Vick, uh, Ray Lewis, um, all players who got second chances and, and went on to have great careers and now are, now are great role models and are more humble because of the position that they were put in, I would like to see the same, you know, mercy given. To, to Ray Rice well you know we'll, we'll see how the whole thing plays itself out I mean it's, it's going to be something that we're going to talk about in the media uh, for the next couple of weeks I'm sure and, and hopefully you know it doesn't overshadow the, the games uh, that, that's as far a big, as that's a big thing for especially Ravens Nation I mean we're getting ready to play Pitt yeah <laughs> that's smart <laughs> we're playing the Steelers <laughs> on Thursday this is that's probably a very smart decision on this part to take this issue and and keep it within this organization they they need they need to figure out why you can't say this is going to be your punishment and then (laughs) they should have been more aggressive initially but they didn't do it separately from from the nfl absolutely i as a woman a mother they should have been more aggressive from the, from the start, you can't come back months later and then say, oh, 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 oh yeah, we got to add some more to it. Why not just, you know, a, a, yeah. a, a, like I said, my agency, he's a lawyer. It, it, it would have been so much easier to just say, hey, you know, when you're thinking about this and, and OK, and even saying, you know, from public backlash. But just in thinking about this, we put the new policy in which states six games for first time offenders. You're banned for the second offense. Mm-hmm. Easily, they should have just said, so we're going to tack the four more games on for you, and you serve the first part of the new ban that we had or, or the new punishment we the had. The organization but should have separately just, applied some sort of do, punitive. Okay, so let's look at this. The Ravens did this independently of the NFL. But then the NFL came back af- right after the Ravens did it, mm-hmm. and they suspended him indefinitely. And you guys, you know, earlier some people asked, what does that mean? What that means is he's no longer – "Quote unquote," an NFL player, and if he wants to be for anybody, yeah, and if he right. wants to be reinst- if he wants to play again, he has to be reinstated, and that's not going to be for another year or two. So, for all intents and purposes, we're talking about a Ray Rice who, let's let's be honest, production had come down a little bit. I'd be hard pressed to believe that Ray Rice ever plays in the NFL again, and, and that's a sad, sad situation there because sometimes. When for people to get better, they need their livelihood. <laughs> I mean, it just it is what it is. He doesn't have that either, you know. And and I'll give you the same situation. Alden Smith in, in San Francisco had, you know, some some you know off the field incidents over the summer, and he ended up getting I think it was uh, four games for substance abuse, five games for you know odd behavior. So I think he had a gun in an airport or something like that. So they gave him nine game suspension. But because he's had some some issues where people were concerned about his well-being, not being around what kept him sane, so to speak, the NFL said, well, he still can come to the facilities for nine weeks. Mm -hmm. It's just like they're not 
th- there's no consistency in, in how they're doing right. things. And I understand sometimes you think, take things on a case-by-case basis. Your policies but, but, just have to but, be rolled yeah, out. Yeah, but you if have to. If it's a no-nonsense Don't have them policy, then. Yeah, I mean, don't have policies a zero, then. Yeah, if it's a zero tolerance, then we just need to let it be that. Yes. But the each, fact that we're in 2014 discussing now implementing rules on domestic violence are you kidding is, me? is atrocious. <laughs> are you kidding it's, me? It's I mean, ridiculous. That's, that, that, that's all you need to know. That's, that's all you right need there, to know. That's, that, for me, that's it's just too much gray area is on this individual case. It, it is. I mean, Heather, is this an opportunity because the NFL, will say, like the last decade has truly built up its female fan base? Is this them? Raven is, Stations, 50%. <laughs> yeah. 50%. It, it is, so, so why today, though? It, you know, it's, <laughs> it's a very divided. If you were to look at some of the social media, it's very divided on how some women feel about this. The act itself mm-hmm. is a no-brainer. Sure. That is a very personal opinion for me. That's, that's aside from how the organization that represents Baltimore handled it. That's what, that's what makes me angry Agreed. is how that was handled because Agreed. it does not look like they were proactive. It looks reactive. Mm -hmm. Um, That is not how you deal with things like this because it looks like you're covering things up. We don't, you know, that's what it looks like to me. You know, I'm uh, covering it up for whether it's for him or not. I think we all know it's CYA for Baltimore. (laughs) You know, (laughs) Bishadi is, you know, this is not an organization. They don't do business like this. No. So, so, so is there, it looks, it looks bad. But is there a slight chance that perhaps the video is not what they were told or led to believe truly happened. From coming from the educational background of somebody that took law classes and knowing how camera systems work, it's impossible to me that somebody did not have full access to the full video. Now, he's already gone through the criminal justice system. There was a prosecutor that was aware of this video. You're going to tell me that that prosecutor did not have access to such heinous footage. Oh, well, well, well what we You know, were, that's a well, whole separate issue. So trust me, somebody had, TMZ got it. Yeah. It, it, somebody, they didn't just stumble it upon did, They something. didn't just stumble upon it. Well, well. CNN didn't drop it. C-SPAN didn't drop yeah. it. Yeah. Sports Center didn't drop it. Mm-hmm. TMZ did. Somebody got paid today. Yeah. We, we were told early this morning that what he described happened is exactly what happened in the video. And to me, that makes it even harsher now because... He didn't didn't run from what happened. He said it. He told them. They investigated it. I guess they probably asked his wife. She admitted the same thing happened. What we saw in the video. Yeah, the video is disturbing to see. But at the end of the day, that didn't make my mind up for me. Uh, it was already done. You know, it was a bad thing that happened, and he was punished. Whether I agree with the the the, the you know length of the punishment when it was handed down, that's irrelevant because the rule was made. You have to stick to it. You can't go back now and punish the, uh, the guy again. I just. Well, as a know. diehard Ravens fan today, I woke up thinking uh, after seeing all this, I said, go O's, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and this is one of the weeks where I was like, here comes the Steelers game. You know, we're, this is our first. Oh, I've got You it. wait all summer for this. You yeah, know, we, we've yeah. done nothing now to wait for this. Tainted. It's the, just the not the same. The game yesterday and then this today, it was a sad day for the it Ravens is. Nation. Let, let me ask you this. This is this is another thing. Totally off this, and now it's something that I'm sure she'll perk up about. I asked a question uh, two weeks ago uh, and posted, what has the better chance of happening? That Los Angeles with the Dodgers and the Angels or the Bay Area with Oakland and the Giants or right here in the DMV, you know, Baltimore area, with the Nationals and the Orioles, wow. which 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 two teams have a better chance of getting to the World Series? Because I know it's hard for you to think the Orioles and Nationals, but they won the poll by a landslide. I believe the Battle of the Beltway is probably going to. I don't know. Do you know how great business California's is going to be for you? <laughs> well, you know it. it this is it's not going to stink. That's for sure. Because you know, we are there national fans here. We've got a nice mix here. You know, we're in Columbia, so we have a lot of transplants, people that aren't really from the area. You have Fort Meade. So there's – you come in here on Sunday. It's not Ravens Nation. We Watch have this. everything. We have Steelers. We have Giants fans. We have Dolphins fans. We have, you know, Eagles fans. I mean, I, you, that's one of the things I loved about it, even though I'm coming from, you know, a Baltimore background, is you walk in here on Sunday and there is no – one group, which is cool right. because everybody's getting a little piece of the action. So let me put you on the spot, though. You know, before we do that, how many Nationals fans do we have here in the building tonight? Any Nationals fans? Mm-hmm. 
Any yeah. Orioles fans? Yeah. All right. So my question Tonight to you is, <laughs> if the Orioles and Nationals are playing for a World Series. Oh, it's the Orioles. And, oh, that, okay. That, that's on. what I thought. That's what <laughs> that's I thought. Just silly <laughs> that's silly talk. <laughs> and she's going to make sure it's that way, right. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How hard would it be if you lost to the Nationals? That, would it be any other it would be team like you'd today. rather? <laughs> it would be another bad day in Baltimore <laughs> but, history. But, but would it? But would it be because you know there, there's there's this dichotomy that everyone talks about as far as you know having lived up here and now moved back down to Ashburn. Growing up, you know, it was always you know being from DC area it was DC and it was Baltimore and it normally didn't mix. We came up here to go to the harbor or see the and Orioles. We go down to the DC. It, to absolutely, the exactly to see the Orioles. That was it. But now. You know, the, 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 the suburbs have grown so much. There's a lot of people in Baltimore work in D.C. and vice versa. So it's almost just one big market now. But is there still that, like, that, that, that hatred there of, of, I of D.C. Think teams? So. I, you know what? I felt it more when um, I was closer to Baltimore. There was, uh, you know, when we lost, you know, the Colts. You know, people had to pick another team because there was no Baltimore team for so a while. So you rooted for the Skins. So some people rooted for the Skins, you know, or they – drove into another you know mm -hmm. another franchise so when we got our team you know what i mean mm -hmm. there was there's still a very divided group of people that were at one point a colts fan and then they had to choose and then they got with that and they stuck with the redskins so i see more people with the redskins and ravens than i do with the orioles and nationals all day what would be people are very passionate about their httr what, you can best believe that oh yeah <laughs> what, what what would be a tougher loss to lose to the Steelers in the AFC Championship mm. or lose to the Redskins in the Super Bowl? I, I know what I think the answer is. Hey, you, might, you might be surprised. <laughs> the yeah, Steelers, I mean, <laughs> that's for what sure. I thought, the Steelers. Yeah. Really? That's, that's a, you know, I don't, I don't think that'll ever not be, you know, a battle. What is it? What is it? Ravens it's just that they, they play the same? have never showed mm -hmm. us a, a hatred. No, it's a Nor competition. Nor have they players. Like, we play in this celebrity basketball game together and – you know, it's AFC, NFC, so it's no no big deal because if we both go to the Super Bowl. That's great. It's great. <laughs> right. But exactly. If you lose that's a win. Exactly. That's exactly it. A team that's it. stopping you from getting to the championship, that's not good. Yeah. So you so you remember, what was it, Flacco's, was it his rookie year when they lost to the Steelers in the AFC yes. championship game? Yeah. That's when I actually lived out this way. And it was uh, one thing I will say that I, that I respect so much about Baltimore as a town is that they do get behind their stuff. And, you know, I saw it for years with the Orioles. But, 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 but right now with the Ravens, it, you know, on Fridays, everyone's wearing purple. I mean, and it's, it, I mean I'm not saying a cult in a negative way, but it, it's, you're an oddball if you're not. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's how drastic it is. Well, I think that also it still goes back to when they didn't have a team and then they got their team and so they're holding on to it like, we're not losing another team. We're not. You know, that's not going to happen. But let me ask you this, and this is something that hopefully we can, we can make it to the car tonight and not offend anybody, but I, I do want to get this from, from a diehard, you know, Baltimore, and if that's what you call it. Do you have an idea for a new product or invention? Hi, I'm George Foreman. People ask me all the time, George, how do I get my idea in front of companies? How do I get a patent? What do I do next? Do you have the same questions? I'll tell you like I'll tell them all. Call my friends at InventHelp. InventHelp has been helping inventors for more than 30 years and has sales offices nationwide. InventHelp can provide patent referrals and submit your invention to companies who are interested in receiving new ideas. If you have an idea and want to try to patent it and submit it to companies, you should call InventHelp today for free information. Listen, I can't guarantee your company will be interested in your idea, but I believe Every inventor deserves the opportunity to step into the ring and take their best shot. Put InventHelp in your corner. Call now. Free information for inventors. 1-800-455-7790. 1-800-455-7790. Medical emergencies. This is Life Alert. Are you okay? I've fallen and I can't get up. I'm calling for help right now. Sharon, we received a smoke signal coming from your kitchen. Get out now. We're calling the fire department. Home Invasion. 
emergencies away from home. I'm trying to get to my car, but it's still a ways away. I'm right here and we'll stay on the line with you and we can contact the police if necessary. And you can have this protection away from home for just $19.95 per month. If it weren't for Life Alert, I wouldn't be sitting here today. Life Alert saves a life from a catastrophe every 11 minutes. For a free Life Alert brochure, call 1-800-830-1951. That's 1-800-830-1951. Call now, 1-800-830-1951. For a free brochure, call 1-800-830-1951. If you're disabled and unable to work, pay attention to the following message. If you're one of the millions of Americans who are disabled and unable to work, you may be entitled to disability benefits through Social Security. Receiving benefits is your right if you suffer from a physical or mental disability. Whether you're applying for the first time or you've already been denied, we can help. You'll be matched up with an advocate who will evaluate your situation, handle your application, deal with Social Security for you, and handle all appeals. Best of all, there's no fee until you receive your benefits. To get started, call the number on your screen now. And keep in mind, there are a vast number of conditions that make you eligible for disability benefits and dozens of additions that you may not be aware of. So if you're disabled and unable to work, call the Citizens Disability Helpline today for a free, no-obligation consultation. Call 1-800-735-0219. Call now. left town okay people hated that and they took our team and they rolled out in the middle of the night Mayflower trucks all that but I'm just asking you kind of took the Browns team <laughs> was that I mean how, I mean isn't I that kind of like oh, right? oh, oh, oh. that sounds like a double <laughs> standard right there I'm not sure if we, uh, done a if we packed up the Mayflower it was uh, done differently it was but, done differently but 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 you're right, you're right. You have, to, you have to call it what it is. It's what happened with the Browns was a decision. What happened with the, <laughs> It yeah, was a decision to the coach. No, that was a decision to leave in the middle of the night. <laughs> that was terrible. <laughs> it was a decision to leave in the snow. That was My Johnny that was United's horrible. poster was crying, I can tell you that. Is it true that no one knew that was happening? I, I can tell you my husband is a savant when it comes, and he had no idea. So there was no talks that we need this to stay in this town or – even, there was I, no I grew up in Waverly, which is not yeah, far from, from Memorial, Memorial Stadium. Stadium. <laughs> right, you know. <laughs> they couldn't I, even try yeah. to keep their team. There was, I mean, I just, would, that is it, so <laughs> It was in the middle of the dirty. night. And they were you know, that's just so right. dirty. I mean, <laughs> so, I, I mean, it's obviously now teams, you know, say all the time, we don't get a stadium with taxpayers' money. We're leaving. It was none of that talk? No, I think at, at the Memorial Stadium had probably – run its course it was an older stadium mm -hmm. you know there was not a lot um Colts weren't playing the way they should be you know it was I think it was one of those turning points you know he wanted to put them somewhere where he could build his franchise where he could put make doors he why? wanted to make money he wasn't making money at that, that stadium that's for sure but why doesn't the NFL adopt a rule that states any team like there's talk of the Raiders now maybe going to LA or even San Antonio for that matter Maybe they keep the colors because the Spurs are close. But anyway, that's just pretty cool. Yeah, but, but my thought is this. Why doesn't the NFL adopt a rule that they can call the Cleveland rule, which basically states if you relocate to another city, the team colors, uniform, emblem, logo, and it. records stay? I think that's – Because uh, the Ravens – would be no Ravens. It's it'd, it'd still be, be the Colts, like but it'd still be the Colts, though. Each team owns itself. The NFL can't. Make I understand that, but isn't it? Tell it, owners what. I understand that, that but isn't it sad that Peyton Manning, playing his whole career in Indy at that point up until Denver, was breaking Johnny Unitas's records? Mm -hmm. And I mean, and I'm not getting mad at Peyton. He wore the black shoes to honor a legend, but I, but I'm sure there were people in Baltimore that, that probably, you know, got sick with food in here that night. <laughs> you yes. know, that's. That's a slap in the face to the city. No, no, because it's this friend. No, that's the team that I left in know, the middle of the night. Still, <laughs> Detroit Lions. The you're, you're, you're from Michigan. They never left. It's the same team. It's the same franchise. But wouldn't you be hurt if you saw your team if they if the Lions moved to L.A. and kept the colors and Barry Sanders records? You would. 
There's no association think, with well, LA. I think that's where people, will cut, as a fan, you basically. cut ties. We're building your business by coming to your games, by buying your jerseys, by buying right. the memorabilia. That wasn't happening Going to here. the signings and all of those things. We're, the fan base is what does that for any franchise. Right. You know? But wasn't but, it but odd? the owners, they do have this little God thing going on where they know <laughs> that they have they're control over where you go. sticking it they're sticking it to you, too, by well, the way. Think about that. You, trust me, there, there are players, and if you think about the Ravens or other fran- franchise groups where the players go out and they build – relationships in their community and they give back to their community and do grassroots things and then you pluck them up and it, that's hard they have to start over you know it's so funny because i'm looking at my news feed and I, I used to have anquan bolden on there and it's so weird to see 49ers and i'm niners nation and i'm like what <laughs> it's just for a split <laughs> second a i'm thinking too. i'm like yeah that was a mistake but too, it's, too, it's, by the way. you know what it's <laughs> like when it's got to be difficult to to be with a family and move into another era, you know? Do you remember the first time watching the Colts in Indianapolis? No, I don't remember that one. I can, I can honestly say that. So when the Colts come here, I, I hear that they do certain things, like uh, they'll never refer to them as the Colts. It's just the team from Indy, or is that – that's got to be tough. The 12th man is bad. <laughs> <laughs> it it, it kind of helps both cities in a way I because think every, yeah. the fans here, I mean, mm-hmm. and, the, and the Colts were terrible in, 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 the, in defense to the city of Baltimore. So the fans weren't going to the games. The they were terrible, were terrible in the end, but for a while they, were, they were the not dynasty not, of the NFL. I know, yeah. I know. Okay. I know. So okay. then they, they went to Indy, and Indy said, we would love you. And then – the city of Baltimore woke up and got after the slap in the face and said, oh, okay. We're going to take somebody else's team. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, but when they did get a team, now, you know, look, look at the Ravens fans. And, you know, they went on and won Super Bowls. And, the Ravens know, fans are. And they love their team because they know the mistake they made in not appreciating Johnny Unitas, all the foundation he laid. That's when football was man's football. Yeah. My father says that all the time. When they were just playing football, imposing their will. Think, think, think about the money. Think about that. From they that weren't making any money. They weren't making any money. They had other extra jobs. Yes. And these guys were out imposing their will. I like how you say that. Imposing their will. <laughs> That's what That's you do. That's mano mano. Whoever That's you know. Yeah. And and today, you know, when we're out at practice and. They say that you can't tweet things that are I that are supposed to be give teams a competitive advantage. I'm like, listen, at the end of the day, you're lining up against the guy in front of you, and even if you tell him I'm running left, you got to stop the guy. <laughs> Bottom stop. line, you know. So they've softened the game up. Uh, it's definitely not the game we've grown up I watching. I say it all the time. The, no. young, the young guys like scoring now. They like. 40 point games. I can't stand it. <laughs> Nobody gets mad when Mike Tyson knocks somebody out. In 10 seconds. Nobody <laughs> said that was harsh or he should be fine for knocking him out. You're, you're a player. <laughs> you, you, this is something you knew it was going to be physical when you signed up for, right? Yeah. And if you, you, have you had concussions that you may not have known about? I would probably say definitely. I mean, it's football. <laughs> There's no probably. <laughs> it's definitely. What do you mean definitely? Have, I mean, you had con- have you had concussions that you, that you were not diagnosed with on the field? Sure. And you wouldn't tell them? I mean, it depends on how I really feel. <laughs> I'm not I mean, trying to get you in trouble. If I can I'm remember just... my kids' names, I know what day it is. I, can, I know that I'm not slurring my speech. I didn't go to sleep and wake up and then try to keep playing. <laughs> you know, you got to be strategic. You know, some people go down there and they're trying to hit sideways and they get hit. You know, it's a technique to this too, you know. So you don't have a problem with the fines and stuff for, for striking to the head? I got a problem with most of them because most of them aren't legit. Yeah, they're most of them, yeah. Most of them are just, oh, it's the helmet's tap. Call. Yep, you're right. So, I mean, I do have a problem like, you know, if somebody's out there spearheading guys, yes, give them the fine. But if a running back ducks his head and he's trying to evade you and you're just trying to make a tackle, you know what I mean? Or the same thing, a receiver catches the ball. You see all the time they catch the ball and then they just duck. It's like, well, you would have been in the strike zone, but here's a guy that's already an elite athlete built to move faster than the defenders you know what i mean mm-hmm. and, and and you and you saying i gotta hit him a certain place and he's moving and ducking so you basically saying you want me to miss the tackle you yeah they, I mean? they basically <laughs> want points on the board right so if you want to i always say that if you want to stop the injuries you need to change some of the rules in the game 
That way the players focus on other things instead of hitting. Well, I think in this town, you need not ask, you know, what they remember most about their two Super Bowl wins is defense. You know, the, the 2000 team, they I mean, had one of the greatest defense on record, in my opinion. That was the greatest defense ever. And then stop playing the highlights if you don't like the big hits. So they make money <laughs> off those things, too. You know, they, they make a lot people, of money off of And then the it. next Monday Night Football commercial, they come on, that's the same hit that you find somebody for in the commercial. Yep. Why? <laughs> you know, it, again, this is like one of those hypocrisy days. Yeah. I, I will say this, too. Why is it that, going back to Ray Rice, he had to do those conferences, but yet we didn't see Ursay do one? Not one. That's Where's Roger saying. Goodell? It's How come we haven't seen Roger Goodell's mug once? But anytime a guy's fine for you know for for you know the thing. drug it's use, there he's always showing his face about it. It's a double standard. They need to have this is bigger. This certain. is a huge story. When I'm not to cut you off, but if you're going to impose this sentence, and you're going to, you need to be the face of you've it. got to come out and so and and be strong about why I, you did it. I expect to hear a <laughs> statement. You, I mean, it, it, it's crafted now, though. It's not, it's not heartfelt. It's going to be robotic tomorrow. If you're going to do the, the crime today, then you got to come out and talk about it. You, you see Harbaugh came out and talked about it. Yeah. They didn't duck from well, it. Well, that's the type of organization that they are. Well, what does that say about the NFL as a whole? It's the type of organization they are. Watch, I'm gonna be locked out of I'm gonna be locked out of practice on Wednesday because of this. No, no, no. Seriously, they need to make a statement. I mean, um, ah. I mean, we've seen the whole thing with Sterling in the NBA. You know, just say how you feel. Don't try to have a meeting and make sure we appeal to somebody. Let's do what we feel do is right. right. Adam Silver. Adam Silver. Adam right Silver. Adam Silver, to me, went right up to the top as far as commissioners. Instantly. Yeah. Because he, he stood for this something. This is how we feel. And this he said, we're, not, we're yeah. not doing this. We're not having it. I mean, there's another owner yesterday in that Atlanta. That happened initially with y this. Yeah. I mean. He never ducked. And maybe he looked uncomfortable on the podium for a while, mm -hmm. but he stood his ground. And now you have other owners, because of what he did, who put stuff out. They're admitting I did it, and they're selling their teams. <laughs> he probably didn't want it, Land. He probably saw what Steve, he probably saw what Sterling got for, yeah. for the Clippers and said, <laughs> really? Oh, yeah, $2 billion? Maybe I need to say something. So, look, uh, Heather, you, you guys have done a lot of work in here, and uh, I, I like the screens over there. Have they been yeah, a big hit? We have 35 screens now. can show 14 different games on Sundays. We've I got, like we've it. Got, we've got a – I have no problem UFC seeing everything. Now that Mayweather <laughs> is coming on Saturday night. That's going to be ridiculous. Yeah. that's. Uh, that, are, you, are you a boxing fan at all? Yes. Are you a Mayweather fan? At times. <laughs> <laughs> is he the, great, hey, is he the, is is he the greatest is, of all time? No. Let, really? Let me no, say this. So. Let me say this. Um, I'm, I'm old school, so take a guess. I'm old, old school. Muhammad Ali. Yes. And you know what? You we know, can live with that. Do you know um, You know who Adrian Bronner is? Well, that's who fought last Saturday. Right. I didn't even get to see the fight because I fell asleep. But you know who he is, right? <laughs> I know who he is. So, Because you, you, ever since Adrian Bronner has really came out, a lot of people respect and appreciate Mayweather a whole lot better. <laughs> No, no, no. Because no, they crazy. realize it can be a lot worse. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean. <laughs> they be like, who is this kid? Bo bo yeah. Boxing, boxing needs to, they need <laughs> the next. Like, and they what? haven't identified him that's, yet. That's, that's, that's Mayweather. exactly right. They're looking for the next because there's no, how many more Mayweather it. fights that we're going to see, really, honestly. Every year it's something might, else. You, but he has a franchise. He has a business. Mm-hmm. And he's not fighting bums now. I mean, he's beating the best that, that they offer to him. And people, for people to say, like, when he fought Canelo Alvarez, people had Alvarez beating him on a pedestal. Right. We knew better. There's no, there's no human being alive. The only person can be Mayweather is himself, and that's not going to happen. But boxing is in, and I'm a huge boxing fan, and he is he bigger than me, myself. But boxing has to identify the torchbearer, and, and they don't have one right now. Right now, now. no. <laughs> and that's I, why he's hanging I think, around, too. I think too. the UFC is also – Challenge that a little bit. Boxing no, is a I don't think so. be surprised. Yeah. yeah, because they pit, they they do a lot of events and they're doing a great job, but the purse is going to speak louder. That's than, true. Than everything, I think if the middleweight class can step things up and get things going, get um, Andre Ward going again, and, and find somebody for him to fight and try to create the same type of. Uh, Mayweather mystique behind what he can do and can he, you know, take on. Andre Ward is going to become Winky Wright 2.0. He's yeah. too good. No one wants to fight him. 
he'll go down. And no, it's... no. Everybody wants to fight the champion because that's the payday. You know what yeah. I mean? Isn't that yeah, sad? But isn't nobody, that sad? Nobody wanted to fight Winky because he was going to stop you from getting there. <laughs> <laughs> the champions didn't want to fight Winky. And then you got Anthony Durrell who just yeah, got the WBC. Right over super, me- super middleweight. Somebody who nobody wanted to fight would be like a Andre Durrell who he doesn't have a title. But at the same time, he's going to stop me from getting the title sure, or take sure. my title from me. That's the guy who you don't want to fight. But And then it's a lot of uh, super uh, middleweights in, in um, Europe that, that – that can fight, so um, it's not going to be the same as far as Mayweather and the welterweight class. But, no. And but as you've seen, um, Adrian Broner fight there. at 140. He's not fighting those uh, welterweights no more. He know <laughs> Captain Madonna. Uh, you know he's too small for them guys right now. Will, will this will this place sell out with Mayweather's fight? Oh yeah, really. Pacquiao be, Mayweather, Mayweather always. We're, we're, it's usually standing room only. I think the last fight. Um, we were you shut down. You mean there's people up here and everything? I mean, it's standing room only. Wow. Like, we had to shut the doors the last time. We had every, we were at capacity. Wow. So this yeah. is good. This is good. I mean, just the, the whole layout. I mean, the TVs well, are fresh. Think about it. There's, you know, we can show the, we show the pre-fights, you know. Um, you can also, any of the, you know, the college games that are going on. So there's something for everybody. But when the fight comes on, there's no bad seat in the house. You, there's not a TV. You can't. See, you know what I mean? And yeah. the other beauty of it is you get a chance to see your food being cooked. Well, here's the thing. You don't have to clean up. <laughs> you get waited on. You're probably paying less than you would at home. Definitely. And then you're for sure going to see it. You don't have to worry about whoever's uh, the little minions on direct TV <laughs> or Showtime is messing with your TV. And right. This is, this is a good place. You know, obviously we're excited about it. Uh, again, we, we plan on Monday. Um, having Tyrod back out here, and it'd be great to you know come out here after a big win against Pittsburgh. You know that that would oh, be great. I get look at the hair on my arms. <laughs> <laughs> I got knots over that. And, and you know, guys are more festive too because they've kind of had an extended. You know, it's almost like a bye week almost. You know, when you play on Thursday because you have three extra days now, so a little bit more festive mood. So uh, let's keep our fingers crossed for a big, uh, big Ravens win, and and. and if you're a Redskins fan, you know, <laughs> they need one against Jacksonville in the worst way as well. So we'd hate to see both teams here in the region start the season 0-2. Could be very, uh, yeah, <laughs> some drastic, drastic times. So nah. a- as always, folks, uh, had a great, great time uh, with everyone out there. And uh, I want to thank Steph, you know, came out and he's been working all night, you know, filming everything. Uh, Jesse, we wanted to get Jesse on shortly, but, but. If you're okay, we'll get you on the next show, have them come out, because it's late, and I, I can tell guys are tired. There are people that want to see the second half of the games, and there's another game coming up tonight yep. as well. So The one-man game. Full, full tilt, you know. Uh, San Diego comes on a little bit later on uh, against uh, Arizona. Yeah. So, so one man game. Yeah, Lorenzo Alexander, good friend. Good, that's your guy as well. So yeah. uh, we'll get a chance to check that out. Um, as always, you can go to uh, sportsjourney.com, check out – a lot of the content that we have. Um, good luck, Steph, photography and videography. I told him I'd give him the plug on that, so he's excited <laughs> about that. Um, a lot of stuff that we're doing. And next month, you know, Heather and myself, we're, we're trying to get everything squared away, you know, for uh, a, a really nice setup with uh, Coca-Cola, you know. So we're, you know, excited to try to get something done there. But we have a Redskin and a Raven here at the same time. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Epic. Yeah, that, that'd be, you know, really interesting. So we're excited about that. So, again, folks, check us out. A lot of good stuff that we're going on. And uh, as always, uh, for myself, you can go to my Twitter account at Lake Lewis and get our daily updates from practices around the league, all that good stuff. Twitter? Seawheel95Flint. That's the Twitter. That's the <laughs> Instagram.